Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a rather lovely chalk stream dry fly pattern called Lund's Particular. The hook I'm using for this tie is a filling mill ultimate dry fly hook size 14 and the thread I'll be using is some red dyed silk. You can also of course use a conventional red tying thread if that's easier for you. For the hackle tip wings I'm going to be using the tips from a natural grey dun and cock cape and then for the tails and the stripped quill body I'm going to be using some red game cock. I'll cheat a little bit up at the head end and use a modern genetic saddle hackle. You can also of course use the old school Indian cock capes. I've cast on my thread a couple of millimetres behind the hook eye and here I've prepared my hackle tips. I'm aiming to get those about the same length as the hook shank in total and you'll see that I'm tying them in pointing forwards we'll be able to spread those out into the spinner wings later. I've not stripped the barbs, rather I've cut them, and that just gives me a little bit more grip and strength when I'm tying them in. These are such fine stems, that otherwise if you strip them off they can get really quite fragile. I've made a few turns backwards, and the next material is going to be our tail. Again, aiming for about a length overall similar to the fly. Making a few loose wraps, checking for length. We can let off the tension and adjust if needs be, and I'm happy with that so I'll secure those down. Drawing up the excess we can trim away, aiming to get it to blend nicely into the wraps of silk where we tied down the wings to keep the body nice and slim and even. Adding a little wax to the thread here, it does help with silk, and I'm tying in a stripped quill from a large red game cock saddle feather, just making nice even wraps forwards, trying to keep that body nice and even, giving a really nice smooth underbody that we can wrap over. By stripping the barbs off the feather, it creates a little band of white on one side and of course with that natural red game colouring it gives a really nice banded and segmented effect. Looking from above I'm going to make a couple of figure eight wraps through the wings, get those spread out into a nice spent spinner position. So I've gone forwards on one side, backwards on the other and then I'm going to do a couple of wraps in front, a couple of wraps behind and they'll be nicely secured. Also at this point it's worth trimming off any stray fibres that are pointing forwards so they don't get in the way of hackling later. Now it's time to wrap our hackle and I'm just going to do this in nice touching turns working forwards. This fly was developed by a gentleman called William James Lunn who was a rather famous river keeper on the Test, one of the most famous chalk streams in England and the, the birthplace of dry fly fishing as we know it today. He developed it in 1917 and it quickly proved to be a rather effective and killing pattern on the test. And Mr Gibley was one of the first people to use it, and he commented that the trout were being rather particular today, but Mr Lund's fly seemed to be doing the magic, and had broken a blank for him. And that's how it got the name, Lund's Particular. It was originally tied as an imitation of a large dark olive, but it's a pretty versatile pattern, and I'll show you a view from underneath later, and you'll see that it represents a wide variety of spinners. It's actually an incredibly simple pattern to tie, just those two colours of hackle and some silk. It's a very minimalist fly, but it uses the different techniques of stripping and wrapping the quills to give a really nice segmented effect. You can manipulate the feathers to look like almost anything. I've finished wrapping the body, so I'm going to trim away the excess and I like to put a thin coat of varnish over my quill bodies. Not only helps to protect them, but also just adds a little bit of depth and a little bit of luster to that segmentation. You can see what I was talking about with those dark and light segments. It's a little bit like a peacock quill body, but rather firmer and a little bit more durable. Now with a little bit of extra wax I'm going to tie in my hackle. Like I said, I'm cheating. I'm using a modern saddle hackle. It's got a really nice extra bit of length to it and just makes life that bit easier compared to using the somewhat webbier and spindlier Indian cock hackles. But if you want to be really traditional, use a couple of Indian hackles, tie them quite long and spindly. I found some photos online of some original flies as tied by Mr Lunn, and by today's standards we might think that they look a bit of a mess. The hackles all over the place, the body's not wrapped quite as evenly as we might be thinking of doing nowadays, but quite clearly it worked. And I think that sometimes we put too much emphasis on tying really, really clean, neat, tidy flies. The insects themselves aren't neat and perfect. They've got legs going all over the shop. And sometimes I find that with my own fishing, 
A fly that's been knocked around a bit, that's taken a few fish, has been bashed around in the fly box, can actually be a more effective fish catcher than a freshly tied clean one. Yeah. Your mileage may vary, make up your own mind. I've wrapped my hackle close around the wings and that's going to keep them pointing 90 degrees from the hook shank. Now we can make a couple of wraps of silk over the top, trim away the feather, build up a little head, whip finish and varnish, and that's the fly complete. Here's a view around, we've got that nice red game cock hackle sticking out from the back, that segmented body, a little coat of varnish, enough hackle to keep the fly floating, and those big spinner wings that are going to provide a really nice impression and a view from below. It's a very lovely pattern, very traditional. Here's a view of it in the water and you'll see what I mean about that meniscus, sitting right on the surface film like a drowned or dead insect. And looking from underneath, you can see it's got that lovely impression. It's a great spinner pattern, very traditional, so do give it a go. Thanks for watching.